Hello and welcome to Eve. I am Flight Instructor Watts and I will be your tutorial agent today. Uh, what we're going to be doing is going over the basics of the UI and functions and a couple of other things. Um, I will try and group things up so I can put timestamps on the video. Uh, if you have just joined us and you're new to Eve and you've only just got through the aura um, situation which literally brings up all of the UI slowly for you and teaches you in a kind of like a roundabout way of what you're doing. If you're new and haven't started doing anything yet, best thing to do is click the link in the description of this video, uh, head to Eve, re-sign up with another email account and restart a character, but with a free 1 million skill points to spend on any of the skills that you that you can um, obviously within alpha clone limits right once you've done that come back and continue the video so again welcome to Eve if you've now got a 1 million skill point account um, we can crack on so first things first this is Eve this is your little ship you are in your station or hopefully you should be if you haven't dock go and dock right click your station and dock or right click a station and dock until you're literally in the in the station like we are now um we will run over a few things to start with um right first of all let's go with what we've got in front of us um this is your search bar you can search for anything in eve actually let's just tell you a little bit about the game first um eve is a massively online multiplayer space sim um you there's no real once you get over the little tutorial sections it's literally up to you what you want to do and that is exactly how it is it can be there is a lot to do um or it can get boring very quickly depending on how you how you approach the game um there is no, don't ask what the best ship is or what the best guns are or what the best thing is here and what the best thing is there because it is literally um, situation dependent. What may be good in one area might not be good in another. What ship may be good doing something here might not be good doing something there. They all have their pluses and they all have their minuses. Um, if you right click the ship and show info, it will tell you in the info panel what their bonus roles are um, so you can literally work your skills around the ship you want to fly talking of that this is your Eden Neocon um, or Eden Con or whatever you want to call it and if you click the E at the top this will bring you up with a load of shortcuts for you to go and have a look at it pretty much covers everything including logging off and settings um, why we're here in settings to help things uh, um, for when you're when you want to compare things best thing to do is untick this box here it's in general settings untick only stack windows if shift is pressed what that does is allow you to view components in their own individual windows without it overwriting the overriding the window you've already got open very very handy for when you want to compare the stats of certain items um, every ship is customizable uh, the only way you'll customize the look of the ship however is with skins that they added to the game um, but otherwise you could customize it with whatever f modifications you want to put on it now the idea is to ma ma match the guns that the ship uses with the guns that you're going to be using uh, to get the best out of it you can fly you can fly you can fly any ship as long as you train for it and you can fly you can attach any guns as long as you've trained for it uh, there, there are no real levels character levels in the game it's all based on skill points there are levels to do with the skills mind you and each skill can be maxed out to level five um, skills take actual real days to learn so if the skill says it will take one hour and 15 minutes it will take in game real time not in game real time one hour and 15 minutes to train so bearing with with that bearing in mind um you can only train one skill at a time um you can purchase a skill extra skill slots but that's with real money. Uh, we are working with an alpha account, so I'm only going to cover the alpha stuff at the moment. 
or the very basic Omega account stuff. Uh, what it means is an, an Alpha account and Omega account only differ in the fact that the Omega account is pretty much the entire game unlocked, whereas the Alpha account is limited by levels of what you can actually do, as in le skill levels. So what we're going to do is, uh, if we crack open the, our skill our character sheet a moment obviously your name at the top this is your alpha account i mean your status this will be either an a omega or an alpha this is an alpha account because that's what most people are going to be joining the game with um these are your skills i've already got one training because this is what i want to show you um on an alpha account you can only train you can only queue for a day you can queue skills that train longer than a day but you won't be able to add any on so if we clear this for a moment by right clicking and removing um so basically now we're that we've got no skills in training as you can see uh there is a fair few amount we'll well, this is where you can obviously click it onto my skills can train now. So we'll click those ones um, or have prerequisites for. So in other words, if you've already trained skills that you need for these skills, then that's pretty much where it is. Uh, certificate training, um, basically level one. You can change this. So level one navigation and it will. this is for level one certificate level two certificate level three level four level five so if you if you want to plan what you want to train for these certificates in each of the areas like battleship navigation jump drive it's all these all change anyway you can you can pick and choose which ones you want to do it's handy if you have a plan of what you want to do so if you're a if you want to say if you want to be a miner, you could train for the mining side of things. If you wanted to be a corporate person uh, building stuff um, for the player market, you can go into trading and all that lot. Uh, then you have obviously all the spaceship stuff for train. Uh, like um, if you wanted to be a pirate or if you wanted to be um, just a military person or run missions or um, scanning down sites and hacking things like that there is so much you can do we're not going to cover all of it we i want to try and get this and do it as quick as possible there is a lot to cover here so basically uh with the skills any in yellow with a yellow dot um denotes that you need an alpha an omega account to train so we won't be able to train any of these because they need the um the paid for account uh so once you've paid for it though these will then be unlocked and you won't see the gold you'll just see the bra the, the dark gray uh another thing is if you go omega and then you train up an omega mega skill when your 30 days runs out because that's how they do it in 30 days or you could buy the three three months six months or even 12 months package but basically once your omega account reverts back to an alpha account any skills you've trained previously that are omega you will still retain them you just will lose the ability to use them so you still have them there they still have the skill points attached to them you just won't be able to use them if you then revert from an alpha account back to an omega they will then unlock again and without any of the, having to train them again so that's very handy and very very useful to understand so anyway we're going to go back to my skills and we'll go back to can train now and um, basically so what we'll do is um so you drag what you want to learn into the skill queue uh you can drag more and more you can also right click and add level four to the queue as well right now obviously we've got very very close there and uh, we have gone over uh, they also if you notice there's um these are slightly colored differently as well do you know it's whether or not you'll be training it for that day or the next day um it's only a very slight it's just to kind of like help you anyway with it uh right you can get free skill points like this one here kill one npc 2500 skill points if you've done what i asked you to do and you have the one million skill point account you will have down here at the bottom um the skill injectors and it will tell you here the amount of skill points you can use you can right click and then apply skill points uh, it doesn't give me the option because i don't actually have any skill points to apply to this character but if i did you can right click and literally this one here it tells you 
uh, level one is 250 skill points, and then level five is 256,000 skill points. So from zero to 256,000 skill points, that's from level one all the way to level five. Drones is the same, uh, but some of these can be quite long, like Spaceship Command. Uh, oh, no, maybe not. Uh, what have we got? Minimitar Frigate. There, there we go. That one's level one is 500 sk skill points, up to 512 skill points. On an Alpha account, you're only training at one time speed. Omega account will double the speed. So this six hours and 26 minutes one will be three hours and obviously, you know, 15 minutes instead of that so you this two days will be down to one day um you know uh, what's that, 18 hours something like that i mean sorry one day and eight hours rather than two days 17 hours um so anyway moving on that pretty much covers the skills as far as i know i might have missed some but it doesn't matter this is your total skill points obviously if you have the one million extra skill points once you've spent them they will be up here uh, this is your total net worth. Uh, this is your home system for your clone. So if you get killed, you're out. It's basically get killed. Uh, this is where you'll respawn. The system you'll respawn. This is your security status. This is affected by doing agent missions and killing certain factions. This will go up and down. Uh, but you can also check this anyway. You can check your standing. This will swing left or right. Uh, whether or not you're in favor with them or you're below standards with them and you can work on either getting security states back or carrying on and making it worse but it doesn't really matter um, your character in here your augmentations you can buy implants to help with your uh, abilities to either fly your ships or train faster jump clones that's so you can put a jump clone or another version of yourself in a station somewhere else and then you can jump between the two clones uh, bearing in mind there is a 24 hour wait between jumping between the two clones um, attributes these are to do with how fast you train each training skill has obviously you know if you can see there it says intelligence and memory that is what it's affected by over here we've got a charisma and willpower and then memory and perception and so on and so forth and uh, basically you can improve these either via remapping which you can remove points from and add points to and then click save changes bearing in mind you get two bonus remaps and then you get one remap every 12 months um, so once a year you'll get a remap uh, so be careful changing those just in case you don't you only want to change them if you are going to be um, focusing on one specific branch of learning so say if you wanted to learn all your targeting skills within a month um, or your gun skills within a month blah 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 it's not going to take a month it's just a, that's just a an example for instance write your biography you can write anything in here that's the history of your character um decorations i wouldn't worry too much about i've i've been playing this game since uh, 2006 and i have absolutely no medals ranks or anything so it doesn't matter that's more to do with play player versus player right interactions that's a standing we just covered that a moment ago your kill rights whether or not you have kill rights over someone um your security status again it's, it's pretty much self-explanatory it's your security status combat log shows your losses and your kills um so if you get killed in space and you want to know who's done it so you click losses and it will show you the rundown of what your ship was what your ship had on it what survived the explosion what didn't if you do get killed you will end up in you you will end up in your pod which looks like this this is your pod um it houses your clone um if this gets destroyed then your clone dies if your clone dies and you have implants installed for instance they will also get destroyed you it's a very it's a very severe game this it's it's um 
its punishment for losing and losing a fight is very very sharp you don't keep your ship you don't keep the modules some modules can survive so if you're if you're facing an npc you could probably get some of those modules back if it's a player however they'll probably that's probably why they killed you anyway to see what modules your ship has um if you end up back in your station in your pod because you had a lucky escape or you respawned in the station in your pod you don't have any other ships the station will give you a free ship all you have to do is come over to this panel here and click board my corvette right so this is your corvette right eve is broken down into a very into four main factions sorry that's the market um eve is broken down into four main factions which is Amar, Kaldari, Galante, and also Mimitar, um, situated around the central central region of the map. Um, on the outside, you then have what is called um, low set space. Um, the security statuses go from naught point, I mean one point zero, all the way down to naught point naught. Now. This is all to do with your security and how safe you are. 0.1.0, you are relatively safe. I won't say you're fully safe because you can still, if you're if you're in a player corporation and your player corporation is at war, uh, people who are, you are at war with can openly attack you in high security space with no repercussions from Concord. If you're not, however, and someone attacks you, then hopefully you are kitted out enough to survive the encounter and not have to worry too much about it. Um, right, traveling around the map, you have all these fun funky things so you can uh, to keep you safe and everything like that. Um, a couple of ones I'll just point out quickly is in factional warfare, um, malicious ships destroyed in the last hour and ships destroyed in the last 24 hours. There are others as well, which are basically um, avoidance stuff, planets, and also whether or not pods have been killed in, in certain areas of space as well. Um, it's very, very handy for if like the average doctor pilots in the last 30 minutes or if you're traveling through and you've got some i mean that was yeah you know if you're traveling through low sec and you need to know what what's available or whether or not that escape pods destroyed in the last hour so we have quite a few actually <laughs> come to think about weren't expecting that many which are these yellow dots here denoting that there's been pods destroyed in the last hour one pod destroyed in the last hour 13 jumps away one pod just killed in the last hour yep that you know this for safety reasons so we won't go too much into that because to start with you'll probably be situated around the area where you started um obviously your, your starting ship will won't probably look like this either right anyway so any as you've joined what you're probably wondering is um a lot of how to do stuff so anyway this is your mailbox you get mail um you usually get spammed by corpse saying yeah join us but well, i can't be bothered with all that if someone's going to spam me with stuff instead of me looking out for it i mean you can do if you wanted to but they're just you know i don't know Anyway, um, this is your inventory. Inventory is completely different to your assets window. Right, this is your assets window. This is your inventory. Um, your inventory is literally the station you are in, uh, which is your item hanger and your ship hanger. Your ship hanger will show you ships that you own that are either docked or packaged in your ship hanger in the station you are in. Um, this is your ship that you are actually in this shows you your um cargo cargo bay for the actual ship you are in this top one this is your drone bay this shows you the drones in your drone bay for your ship um you cannot use drones if they are in your cargo bay they need to be mounted as long as you've got the skills to use them in your drone bay to be able to use them in pvp or when you're doing pve uh, this is your item hanger this is where items are stored so you go out on a mission, you loot some stuff, you come back, you drop it all in your item hanger. This is your Plex Vault to do with um, real in-game Plex that you buy with real money. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into that. That's pretty much, um, yeah, that could be here and there. And depends whether or not you want to actually muck about with Plex. But anyway, uh, this personal assets, what personal assets does is tell you where your stuff is. That is literally it. 
it can tell you whereabouts the stuff you own is situated around the universe of eve because sometimes what you'll do is you'll buy something accidentally off the market space because it says it's the cheapest and it's like 13 jumps away. If that's the case and you still don't know where it is because you thought it was going to be in your inventory up here in um, your item hanger, because usually when you buy stuff and it's in the same station, it drops in your item hanger. If it's not in your item hanger, check your personal assets. Just remember, though, there is a five minute delay on personal assets. So if you've just literally closed it and then brought something and then open it again and it doesn't show you anything, so you're not sure where it is, wait five minutes or re-log. You can just log out and log back in, which is usually quicker. And it will update this and it will let you know where it is. To go and get it, you right click it and set destination and then fly to it dock at that specific station that you brought it from because anything in this game is not delivered to you you have to go and get it unless you buy it from the same station you are in right so that covers those two pretty much next is your wallets pretty much self-explanatory just tells you how much money you got all your transactions and stuff another thing if you brought something you weren't sure what it was click on market transactions it will tell you here what it is you brought um and it might even uh, location there you go so location you can set the destination and off you go um right so regional market this is your regional market usually when you're doing a regional market you will open it up um it'll be all closed like this so say if you needed a new ship so we'll go to frigates and we'll go to standard frigates and i am kaldari um, so I fly Kaldari ships. Well, I don't have to fly Kaldari ships. I can train for the other ships. But basically, you don't do something stupid like this just because it's it's one million credits, and you know you've got three jumps there. You can save yourself half a mil. So do the three jumps and go and get it. But basically, don't just click it like this and then just oh, that's the cheapest in the region. Press buy because that one's four jumps away. That one's five jumps. That one's eight jumps. You know, go to, I mean, this one's nine jumps. So if you view that, I mean, that's only three jumps. Why it's giving you one that's nine jumps away, I don't know. But this is three jumps and it's 10, 10K less. So it's worth going into the actual screen to view it. Not only that, it shows you where it's going to be. Um, you know, this says station. So this one is obviously you buy this and it pops it in the station that we're in. This one is three jumps away. Um, at Lede Protection Service Assembly Plant. So that means you'll have to right click that, um, set destination, then buy it, then off you go and go and get it. It's pretty much that simple. Um, there are a few ways to do things on here. You can search up here for specific things, which is really quick. Um, you can filter via region, solar system, or the station itself. So if you only want to buy stuff from the station, just filter it via the station, and it will only show you stuff that is actually available in the station. Um, the next thing as well I want to say about it is, right, remember I turned around and said about um, setting that window. So if we right-click and show info on this one and there's variants there like we can then open oh it's, just, it's not going to do it, is it did i click it back do, do, do. only stack windows if shift press oh that's it uh tried to use existing no that's it untick that one the middle one that's what you want right so now if we click that that's it it opens up two of them so you can now compare the two so attributes and attributes in your attributes it shows you the structural hard point, hard points of the actual ship the capacity of the ship the mass of the ship the volume the inertia it's uh, structural em uh, i mean resists it's armor resists and it's shield capacity uh, also it shows you things like this um, what you want to be paying attention to as well is the fitting because it tells you pretty much how much um, CPU you have, but your power grid output, your calibration, um, how many hard points you've got, whether they're launcher hard points or turret hard points. This has no turret hard points, but it does have four um, launcher hard points. This one is two turret hard points and three launcher hard points. It also should tell you what you need um no actually it doesn't if i remember rightly this is a frigate anyway so it'll use small ah there we are yeah small 
the very front of it tells you you need small modules. Um, it's missile, it's combat, and it's shields. It's defensive capabilities revolve around shields. So this is a shield tank. Other ships are armor tanks. So bear that in mind when you're training your skills so you can plan accordingly. Also, a tip for you, don't just jump straight into a newer ship just because it's bigger. Bigger doesn't necessarily always mean better. I mean, it does with PvE, um, but what you don't want to be doing is just rushing into the next biggest ship. Take your time to train up the um, supporting skills first. That's what I'd say. Do the supporting skills first, because what you'll find is the supporting skills actually um, are more... The, the support skills, you can pretty much use... They're good enough for all the other ships. Does that make sense? Instead of just training up for that specific ship, you are training the support skills up. So like small missiles, you can take those small missile skills and you can apply them to so many different ships. Whereas you can only apply the, Cal the, the destroyer, the Kaldari's destroyer skills to the Kaldari destroyer. So although it's fun and nice to get into and quickly build up into a bigger ship, for PvE I can understand that because um, the bigger ships and the bigger missions and the higher missions give you better rewards. Um, right. Another thing with the market, why the hurt selling. Everyone wants to know about how to sell. Right, there's two ways of selling in EVE. Well, actually, there's three. You have right-click and um, sell this item. And then you can either put in a sell order, which means you physically put it on the market for sale, but then you have to wait for someone to buy it. Hence why three months. So it's going to be on the market for three months. Um, this is the price where we, what you want someone to pay for it. So 10000 Yes, it's an over-exaggeration of the price, I know, because it's only a civilian miner. Um, how many How many you've got? Say if you've got a stack of 10 of these, but you only want to sell five, you can set this to five. Um, at 10000 each, and then click sell. You'll pay a broker's fee and a sales tax. Broker's fee can... With skills, you could get the broker's fee uh, dropped down. This is how much money you'll be making after per sale. And then, obviously, you press sell, and it will go on the market for three months. If you want to sell it immediately, then put it on immediate sale. Someone is offering 2 ISK, 0.2 ISK, or 2 cents, because ISK is interstellar credits. Right, so the best thing to do with that would be to right-click and view market details, because look. If we then five jumps over, we could sell, well, actually, yeah, we could sell it for 250 ISK. I mean, 250 ISK isn't really breaking the bank, but, you know, instead of selling it for rock bottom price, because these chances want to do that, you can sell it for a little bit more. But their range is actually in station, so you have to take the item to them. The other option would be to create a contract with it. So you right click and create a contract. This is there's a player contracts market. You could do auction courier. Uh, that's if you wanted someone to actually transport it from one place to another for you. Um, if you wanted to sell it publicly or sell it privately to someone. So if you wanted to exchange a ship or a you or obviously a civilian miner with someone, um, you could do it privately. You could search for their name, exact terms, next, 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 and off you go. And that's how that then that will let them know that there's an item for sale for them or there's a gift for them if you're not asking any money. But that is pretty much that. Um, right. Next, where are we? Ship fit in. Right. The ship fit in window. Let's just strip our ship a moment. Right, this is the strip ship fitting window. Um, over here, what we have is we can... What you'll do is, you'll have your ship, some idea of what you want to fit to it, work to the bet, work to, obviously, the, the bonuses that your ship has. So this one's small hybrid turrets. So what we have here is you'd open up your inventory. If you haven't brought it from here, go to the market and buy the stuff from the market. Um, but basically, yeah, work to the bonuses of your ship. That's what that's the best way of doing it, really. Um, you can do a simulated fit. So if you're not sure whether it will fit before you go and buy it all, you can filter via module slots. And you can drag and drop these onto the ship. And this doesn't cost anything. This is literally purely a simulated fit. And you can fit anything on there. And it will simulate the fit as to whether or not you'll be able to fit it on. Play close attention to, obviously, your CPU and your power grid. These two can be increased using skill points. I mean, skill sheet, skill books in those areas. 
or by learning the specific module skill as well, which can also have an effect on lowering some of these, depending if that's what it lowers. Read the skill book, it will tell you more about it. Um, so let's exit out of that because we actually do have stuff here. So anyway, the civilian afterburner, this is a mid-level slot. So we'll drag that onto the ship rather than... I've seen people, they drag it onto the slot itself and it could, you know, just... You don't have to be that accurate. Just grab the item and then, you know, throw it onto the actual picture of the ship and it will place it where it needs to be. Right. Reloading or loading charges into your weapon. Your weapon will tell you what you use with it so if you go to show info um used and it will tell you exactly what charges there are now you can right click these and show info and then obviously you've got the variations there and um, because hopefully you've done what i said to do so if you double click it let's move that out of the way and then double click that one you can compare what they do so if we go to the description or uh you can go to the description or you can go to the um, basically you can compare them so this one gives you a bonus to minus 50 percent i won't really call it a bonus especially on these guns because the range is limited as it is anyway but basically this is for up close and personal minus 50 percent on the range bonus this one gives you a plus 20 percent range bonus um but it also gives you a minus 24 percent to your capacitor need so you're not going to be using as much capacitor if you fit this to your ship um um, it has uh, three to four hit points of damage, uh, three hit points of damage in thermal and four hit points of damage in kinetic. Um, it does a base shield damage of 4.8 and a base armor damage of 5.0. Now, bearing in mind, there is a lot of uh, your weapons will have an effect on these as well. So basically, if you then let's refill these. As you noticed, all I did was grab the charges and drop them straight on. Once you've brought your charges, drop them straight in. Make sure you've got enough charges to also reload your weapons. So stick them in your hold. You want them in your ship hold because if you exit out and you go and play a mission and you don't have your ammo in there, when it comes to reloading, you will be sitting there in space with them shooting at you and the ability to shoot back. Um, your drone bay is exactly the same. Your drone bay from your hangar bay, grab your drones and drop them into your drone bay. Um, each, this is a light drone, and light drones are five, five square, basically, or just five M3. Um, so you can get bigger drone bays. This is a starter ship, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but basically, your charges also affect your gun. Um, with the charge... Uh, oh, sorry, I'll just put that offline. Uh, but online, right? If we remove the charge from that, the gun does a natural fall off range of 19 kilometers. Um, anything outside fall off range will not get hurt. Um, anything inside fall off range but above optimal range uh, will take damage, but it won't be maximum damage. Anything in optimal range or within optimal range has the ability of being hit with an alpha strike, which is your weapon plus the charge is full potential of damage so we'll just put that in and as you can see now the charge because it has do, 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 50 percent reduction optimal range and so we stick that in there now and now have a look um what we no, is it going to show that's it now it shows you the modified stats so optimal range is down to six kilometers um, or 6,000 meters, whichever you want to call it, or 6,800, which is just shy of 7,000 meters. Um, the fire rate of fire is up by 2.75. All this can be adjusted using skills, by the way. So, like, your uh, gunnery skills, um, like surgical strike is 3% per bonus to damage of weapon turrets. Sharpshooter, 5% bonus of weapon optimal range. Uh, motion prediction, 5% bonus to the tracking speed. So, basically, your gunnery skills and everything like that will affect your guns. So uh, it's the same with everything else. Every, all the other skills in there affect everything else. Um, right. Anyway, that's a quick rundown of it. This is a shield tank. It tells you. Um, so you want to put. You'll be getting shield slots or shield modules to put in your mid 
mid range and then low range, lower will either be either um, shield hardeners or other things like that. Best thing to do is just have a look, see what's there. Uh, this is and play around with the ship fittings as well, the simulated fit. This is your capacitor. This tells you where how much you'll be. Your capacitor will recharge. Um, this is how much DPS you're going to be doing uh, with the obviously different charges. You might want to play around, get different charges as well, or the different ammo types. Different ammo types obviously affect the guns in different ways, so it's always worth having a look. Um, then obviously we've got the defense stats, which is uh, there's four types of damage in the game, which is thermal, EM, kinetic, and explosive. And each area of your ship, the shields, the armor, and the structure have different um, resists to each of the damage types. Um, as I said, this one is a shield. This is a shield tank. So if you're going to put anything on to make it survive longer or anything like that, revolve it around shields. There are other armor ones. Um, some people, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I've never known anyone to do um, hull tanking. So it's either shield or armor. Um, right. Let's just close all this. This is your target in and how many maximum lock targets you can have again these are all affected by skill points from the navigation and your drones um right so now we've pretty much covered the basics of the fitting window i'm not gonna i haven't oh didn't touch on rigs you can put three rigs on your ship this one doesn't have any rigs but they are um Obviously, you need, need to be able to fit them within the calibration range. Um, these can have adver these can have major effects on things like uh, the up your capacitor recharge rate or your firing rate and things like that. So, as I said, play around with the um, simulated fit, uh, see if you can fit them, um, and train up those skills. Right, um, done that. Covered the map. Uh, project discovery. This is something Eve added in. Uh, CCP added in. I'm pretty sure it was for mainly miners, but anyone can do it. In fact, I advise everyone to do it when you're actually sitting in the station board or you're waiting for something. You go through it. You can earn ISK and you can earn ship skins as well. Um, then we've got help. This is the rookie help channel. So, or F12, you can go to the help center. You could get tickets, support tickets, and everything like that. Very handy if you come across a bug or something you need a GM. Um, right, chat window. If you want to talk, you can see people have linked things here. You can pretty much link anything in chat. So you can drag it, and you can literally drag it into the chat window, and it will link to it, which is very, very handy, including people's names. So if you wanted to talk to a specific person or address a specific person, just grab their name and drop it in there. This is the people in the chat. This because there's 1,220 people in there. Um, but also, uh, yeah, you can drag your guns in there as well. Right, on this side, we've got the loyalty points window. Loyalty points. Now, every time you're in a station, you have different institutes or factions or anything like that and there are so many different ones as well you start doing agent missions for them um you start building up loyalty points for the agents and the faction that they're working for once you've got enough you can exchange loyalty points and um and administration charges what i like to see it as uh for items this can be anything from these these ones here are implants and they help with certain things like this one road warp drive speed so this will increase warp drive speed looking at that yeah five percent bonus to ships at warp speed and then obviously you go down these are training ones so anyone with the brain one is right that's bonus plus one to intelligence so that will that will affect your um intelligence uh attribute which will increase the training speed of anything that needs the needs the um, intelligence attribute so it's worth doing the loyalty points and the mission and the agent missions and sticking with them purely for you know these um so and then we have what's that ship insurance i cannot state this enough get ship insurance it doesn't pay out for your entire ship it just covers the mineral cost of the ship 
So the mineral cost to build the ship using a blueprint. So basically, it doesn't cover your modules, it doesn't cover you, it doesn't cover your implants, but it does cover your ship. It doesn't always cover the full cost of your ship either. So just bear that in mind when you get it. But a little bit of something back is better than a little bit of nothing. That's how I like to see it. Uh, factional warfare. I'm not going to go into that because that's some. That's a little bit more advanced than this tutorial. Than this tutorial video. Uh, industry. That's for researching and building things from blueprints. We will touch that when we do the career agent videos next. And I will. So if you if you're unsure about any of this and the career agents and you're stuck with career agent missions, I will be covering them in their own individual videos. Uh, right. You have another fitting window. It's exactly the same. The regional market one is exactly the same. Um, your reprocessing plant is for if you want to reprocess stuff back to their original minerals that they were built with. Uh, the home of storage and reprocessing, the better it is for the minerals you'll get back. That's also for where you reprocess any ore you mine. And again, the higher your skills with uh, reprocessing, the more um, minerals you will get from um, reprocessing the ore you do. Repair shop. Now, there's only two things that self-heal in this game. One is your ego. No, sorry, not that. Uh, one, is <laughs> uh, one is your capacitor. The other is your shields. What doesn't self-heal is your hull and your armor. You can get armor repairers and you can get hull repairers if you have the skills to use them. If you do, then you're not really... The only time you're going to really be going to a repair shop is to repair either overheated modules or repair um, hull or armor or your drones. Yeah, drones. Drones are a good one actually get repaired as well, even though you can remote armor repair those if again if you've got the skills. Uh so yeah, that's where your repair shop is. You can literally click on the item and repair it. Blah 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 blah. Uh the insurance window actually. Let's go quickly to that. Uh can't insure. Yeah, I've got nothing worth insuring actually, because you can't insure the for the starter ships. Um right, clone bay. Again, if you wanted your clone in this station, you can plonk your clone here. We're already here, so there's no point. Um, you can install an actual custom clone. Right, if you've done, you've you've literally, you've done your character, it gives you a pretty much basic, if you notice everyone looks the same there, um, it gives you a basic picture. If you want to change that, click on your customization for your character. It will take you to the customization screen. And then... Um, you can adjust these if you unlock armor. I mean, unlock armor. If you buy sort of like in the e New Eden store, you can buy like arms and cybernetics and things like that. And if you want to uh, place any of the purchased plex sort of like items on your character, this is where they'll be. So you can always access this and put them in clothes in. You can then click next. And it will take you to the posing window. Right, I already have my lovely pose, and I'm going to uh, click the last. You might even just move him slightly. So yeah, and then we can click on that one. You can click over the same one again. Uh, yeah, that looks a bit better, and we'll finalise that. And then that will bung us back into here, and there we go. We have a lovely new, new um, picture. Right, as you can see up here, underneath that, we have the skill. The skills are nicely learning away, and as we've been talking, this little boob bar has started creeping up here. This is the training queue, um, pretty much the yeah, your bar that shows you how to literally yeah, do the training queue. Anyway, right, let's go ahead and undock a moment. Right, I wonder if we go to a I'm going to go to an asteroid belt and see if there's any mobs there. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any asteroids. Not now. It's a bit too late for that. Everyone else has been there and stripped them. Right, so anyway. Right. We will cover the basics of the um, the controls down at the bottom here. Um, so now we're in space. This is your overview. Uh, you can literally open a new tab. Type in label. We'll call this one loot. Click OK. And then we can go ahead and we can remove all this. And we can remove all this and all this and all this. 
Well, we, oh, ooh, wow. We do actually have miners here mining, but there's no, yeah, there's no, um, uh, there's no enemies at this one. Damn it. So uh, what we could do, have a look again. No, we'll look at that one because we're actually at that one. So let's go to number six and have a look there. Uh, right. Anyway, your controls down here. This is your cargo space. So you can open up your cargo while you're in space. If you open up a chest while you're in space, it will give you a loot all button if there's something in it. And then loot all and it will go, it'll open up a window over this one and then it will stretch it in and it will fit in all. Uh, you should have actually got to do that anyway in the, in the aura uh, little tutorial bit. Right, this is your tactical camera. Gives you a bird bird's eye view over your ship. Um, then we have the tactical overlay. Now the tactical overlay is really, really handy. So, because what it does is if you hold your cursor over your weapon, um, it gives you the two, it gives you that nice red ring. And if you look, you've got two bright red rings. One is your optimal range, and the other is your fall off range. Now, thankfully, when you've got ships attacking you, as you can see here, next to the five up here. We have this mobile depot, and this here plonk, it literally plonks a little sort of like marker on the tactical overlay as to where that is in a bubble. So it's just just shy of five kilometers, that is. Um, so we could right click orbit that at six kilometers and orbit around it. I don't know do because this is a player made structure, and if we shoot at that, we'll get in trouble because we're in high security space. Um, right. Anyway, but if we wanted to, we could actually put it on partial safety or even disable safety because uh, these are your safety settings. So we can actually shoot at that player structure because we're in high sec, but we're not going to. Uh, we'll leave the safety on enabled. Um, right on the outer edge of this, which is control O, uh, this is your sensor overlay and it shows you what these the thing is. You can turn these off uh, so you can literally uh, focus on specific things or you can leave them turned on so like when you're sat normally there look normally training site normally so basically when you're doing your um, training and it tells you uh, go to a training site normally basically that's your overlay anomalies and look for the green one and then we're on our way i mean i don't need to actually do this but i'm going to do it anyway then this is your scanners, uh, probe scanner, but we haven't got a probe launcher. I'll cover that in the other tutorials because obviously we're going to be doing probe scanning. Um, moon scanner analysis, we won't be doing that because basically, uh, yeah, we won't be doing that. So actually, we could probably, can we loot that container? We're not supposed to be here. <laughs> so anyway the container is too far to loot so what we're going to we've just double clicked on it and we're automatically approaching it so anyway yeah this is first person camera i don't know why you would want first person camera it narrows your view you can't see what's going on around you you can't see if you're getting being attacked by things um at least leave if you if you don't if you accidentally press that um alt 2 to get back to the orbit camera and that is your autopilot button which i wouldn't really use it's very rare i use autopilot in fact most people will tell you not to bother with autopilot oh look there we go and then just click loot all and that and i'll drop straight into my um yeah, actually, I've got to keep that because that's going to be handy for completing a mission later. Uh, anyway, right, then obviously you've got your warp. These outer overheat the items. See this little green bar up here? You click that. Uh, yeah, I need thermal dynamic skill at level one. But basically, once you've got thermal dynamic skill, you click that. And this bar here, regard, depending, this is low slot. That's medium slot. Oh, this is low. This is medium. This is high. And uh, basically, these are these are high slots these are medium slots these are low slots and these will turn red slowly so you'll also get a red marker on here as well once they get to the top i don't know what happens i'll have to overheat them properly i've never actually overheated my weapons until they've gone pop or stopped working or whatever they do i have no idea this groups your weapons puts them all together so you can fire them all at the same time if you need to reload right click it and reload all 
you can only group and ungroup your weapons when you're not firing. Um, right, and then obviously this is down here. You've got your options for all this really. Right, navigating. So say I want to go Jeter. Everyone wants to go Jeter. I have no idea why. Uh, let's see now, station four. Maybe assembly plant, set destination. Right, navigation. We've set the navigation. It's up here. This tells you your current solar system. This is your security status. This is your current constellation. This is your region. Right, region also affects your market. If you are in a market region, I mean, if you're in Lone Tech region, you cannot access um, the Citadel region on the market. So you'll need to go to the Citadel region and then access it from there. It doesn't matter whether you are one jump over, as long as you're in a different region you will not get the market information for the following market unless obviously you go online and look it up because there are certain websites out there that will let you see that without having to travel halfway across the universe um, right then we have obviously um, this is our nearest star which is Javulian um, and this is obviously the faction space we're in uh, then we have the root planner and down here each of these tell you exactly which system you will be jumping through so if you're unsure but it's highlighted on your map here. Um, obviously, this is the jump. That's the jump gate, not the actual, all this. Yeah. So that one says, what's that? Akura. So Akura is the next jump. So that'll be that first one. Yep. So say if we wanted to um, avoid Amazon. So right click, avoid Amazon, and it will rework. Oh, look, there's one we definitely would like to avoid there because it's having a um, uh, system wide thingy um so anyway right so we've just avoided that and now we go oh uh, we definitely need to avoid that one so it probably was a better idea if we did the other one so click a come down to manage route uh then avoidance list find the system you clicked for avoid right click that do not avoid and that puts it back and it will rework it um again not uh, we covered the um, security status which is basically 0 1.0 to 0.5 is high security in other words concord intervenes 0.45 to 0.1 is um, low sec what's called low sec and concord won't intervene or they're very slow at doing it depending how close to 0.5 you are um actually hold on i've just told that to jump we don't want that um anyway let's stop the ship there yeah if you if you set to do, warp somewhere and jump and you don't want to do it just stop the ship the other thing is you can align to things which is very handy in a fight or if you're in a um if you're doing pve so align to because pve sometimes can get overwhelming for your ship and they can actually kill you now notice my ship has aligned to the station um right now we don't want this route because we're not going to be jumping through it so we're going to again click a look you can type in the location here autopilot active you we don't want to do that show route path in space uh which um i'm pretty sure yeah there it is we can see there that's those lines um actually that's a good point let's get rid of that because that doesn't make any difference to me let's get rid of that right you can also filter it to prefer shorter and ignore security status, prefer safer and stay with 0.5 to 0.1 where possible, and prefer less secure, stay 0.0 to 0.4 where possible. Um, and then obviously avoid systems where pod killing has recently occurred, or avoid systems on your avoidance list and disable oil autopilot at each waypoint. And then what we want right now is clear waypoints, so we're going to click clear waypoints and that gets rid of all of them. So anyway, we're just going to go warp back to the station. Actually, no, we're not. Before we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to do drones so this is my drone bay i have one drone it's a hobgoblin one this ship can only launch one uh because it can only hold one so we've now launched the drone if we have a target we can set it to attack the target uh always pay attention always have this open so you can see any damage being done to your drone if it starts taking damage right click return to drone bay which it will 
and there we go it's now back nice and safe in our drone bay where we're now getting shot at by the enemy or we would be if we were getting shot at so that's basically a the quickest drone tutorial in history that is um don't forget to get your drones after each mission otherwise you will literally leave them behind if you do leave them behind and you can go back to them go back to them and retrieve them never hand them a quest until you've got your drones drones can get very expensive especially some of the later ones hopefully um that's pretty much wrapped up now for this um I say short tutorial, but it's probably been about an hour now. I haven't been paying attention. I will apologise now if I have had robot voice at any point. For some reason, my microphone likes to do that. I haven't worked out why, but it does, and it's irritating and annoying. Um, if they if I haven't covered anything, that's because there is so much to cover. And that is pretty much a rundown of pretty much every action you can do. Oh, don't forget this item up here, which is bigger controls to do things with, like dock, orbit, keep at range, target, untarget, look at, track, and obviously show information about anything you're targeting. So with that in mind, um, safe flying, as I said, remember to have a look at that link in the description. Hopefully we'll cover it. That's covered pretty much everything. Get a, get a 1 million skill point character. And I will see you on the tutorials when we'll be covering these five career agents. If you want to know how to get to those career agents, click the agency button. Uh, and then obviously, what you should be doing actually, if you haven't done it already, go and do this, the tutorial. Go run through these. Um, uh, pretty much tells you to get under this anyway. Uh, once you've done that, uh, you'll be wondering what you need to do next. So click onto Agent Submissions, click Career Agents, and then click Start Conversation. I mean, I'm already in the station anyway, so this is literally giving me what's this one, business career straight away. So I'm going to leave that one there. It should give you a set destination. It's sometimes eight, sometimes nine jumps. Go do the jumps, get into the station, and then if you want to continue the, the tutorial of the different agents, that's what I'll be doing next. So look for the uploads. They're on my channel. As I said, if you like the video, like and share. Give us a comment. If I've missed anything, again, just share your information in the comments section. Uh, my knowledge, I won't say, is absolutely perfect. But, you know, just do what you got to do. Anyway, I will see you soon and uh, safe flying. Have fun.